What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas. And you know, right off the bat, you guys know me, I like these really compact RVs that give you a lot of capability, especially to be able to fit a larger family in it. And this is definitely one of those. Um, let's take a closer look at this really cool Jayco J Flight SLX. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so first, before we get too much further, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this is gonna have a very light gross vehicle weight rating of 4,500 pounds, cargo capacity of 940 pounds, and a dry weight of 3,560 pounds. Towability, now this one's gonna surprise some folks because I know they're gonna say, you know what, you can tow this with just about anything. And there are a lot of vehicles that could tow this. A lot of SUVs, a lot of pickup trucks, a lot of lighter weight vehicles. But this is not the shortest RV in terms of height or length. And for me, I would recommend a full-size SUV or perhaps a half-ton truck. It doesn't have to be like a super high specced out, you know, max tow half-ton. But, um, you know, if you're going to do a smaller truck like a Canyon or Colorado, keep in mind that because of the overall length of this, it's probably going to, it's going to make you feel a little funny at times when you're towing. Um, only because wind can really dictate this, which can dictate what happens to your vehicle. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to start with the inside, then work our way to the outside. I can already tell, you know, manual front and tongue jack, 20-pound propane can, Furion surround cameras, steel steps, Goodyear Endurance tire. Let's take a look inside of this Jayco J Flight 184 BS. Coming up the steps. Queen size bed. Nice dark cabinetry. I like how they're carrying over that really nice kind of two-tone dark with light in this unit as well. You see it in a lot of their uh, larger travel trailers and fifth wheels. Very cool. If you look towards the back, you can see that this is a bunkhouse unit. Let's look at the price real quick. So this has an MSRP of 29,968 and a sale price of 24,116. So from a price perspective, you know, again, given the market that RVs are currently selling at, this isn't a bad price. And this can get you into RVing relatively easy, especially if you have a larger family and you're trying to figure out how we can accommodate, you know, two kiddos plus the parents plus maybe some guests that you might have with you, small kids, right? Because sometimes your kids want to bring their friends with them. You can see right here, it says sleeps five to eight. Overall length of this unit, 21 feet, 7.138 inches long. Unloaded weight of 3,560 pounds. Fresh water capacity, 20 gallons. Gray tank capacity, 19.9, pretty much 20 gallons. Black tank, pretty much 20 gallons. Has a single 20 pound propane can on it and a six gallon water heater has 15 inch D-rated Goodyear Endurance tires. I love having this inside of the vehicle. Just it's access to so much more information. And it's cool that Ron Hoover puts these inside because some manufacturers don't. And when they don't, you have to ask somebody who hopefully knows or who can research that information. That's not always the case. So it is wired for solar. Have some storage right here, storage above as well. You know, it has three windows, one, two, three, aside from the ones above the bunks. Um, you know, I feel like they could have put maybe a front window on here and maybe even a big window right here without raising the price too much. You know, it might have raised the price a couple thousand bucks, but I think it would have been worth it to have just light flooding into this unit. I really think that's where the miss is. It has a great interior, a lot of room. It has reasonable lighting because of the windows, but imagine if there was a large window right here and imagine if there was a large window right there and they put larger windows on the sides. This floor plan would go from, you know, semi appealing to like crazy appealing because you would have, you know, that black series type lighting coming in, that ability to see out everywhere. And I think that that's the miss here. They could have done that. You got storage under here, quite a bit of storage actually. You got storage under here. This is elevated up for the slide system right here. Got some more storage under here. But the only thing I think is missing is a drawer right here. I think it would have been great to have a spot for utensils. And, you know, maybe just one cabinet here and a whole bank of drawers right here. You know, I know that, that everything you add adds cost, but this is one of those areas that I think it would make it so much more appealing. So even if there's a little cost added, the appeal of the RV would be increased so much more. 
Um, it looks like you mount a TV right here on this space. Um, I think that they probably could have put it somewhere else, maybe even like right here. That way you can put the larger windows and you can accommodate that. Has a plastic sink here. Has a nice stainless faucet there. Two burner gas cooktop right here, which is nice. It's gonna be your furnace. Compact microwave, a vent hood right here. You're gonna have a little flap on the outside. You wanna be sure to open up if you're gonna use your vent hood. Otherwise, you're just gonna recirculate the air inside. This looks like it is a gas electric. It is, gas and electric. Uh, the price of these gas electrics are so high, I almost feel like they probably could have saved money by putting a 12 volt refrigerator in here. Then you have some storage space under here, as well as access to some of your cords and cables. Right here, you have storage underneath this space. Good amount of storage. Exterior hatch access to this would have been nice though. Not needed, but it's just something to think about. Your suburban air conditioning thermostat. Okay, stepping into the restroom has a plastic toilet, which doesn't surprise me at this price point. A relatively small shower. It would have been nice to put some type of a surround in here. Again, another area might have cost a little bit more, but I would have absolutely recommended it. This is water impervious wall board, but it doesn't necessarily mean you want to get water on here, especially because there's nothing to prevent it from getting here to here. So some type of a shower surround would have been nice. Have a nice little mirror that they've mounted on the end here. Overall, it's a nice compact little travel trailer. You know, certainly you can sleep a good number of people in something this small. You have more towing options, which is nice. Let's hop outside and take a look at the outside of this channel. Okay, starting from the front, working our way back. Again, manual tongue jack, 20 pound propane can. Got a little storage right here, probably under the bed. Feels like it might be locked though. Yeah, it's locked. But that's just some storage that's under the bed. Again, Goodyear Endurance tire, which is nice. Has traditional leaf sprung suspension. Outside of your furnace, this is gonna be vent for your refrigerator. This is what I was talking about for your vent hood. It's closed right now. So if you get this RV and you don't realize that this is closed, you turn your vent hood on when you're making bacon in the morning, you're just gonna recirculate all that air inside. You wanna pop this open. And once, like that, and now you can circulate air and get that stuff out from the inside of the RV. Something a lot of people don't know believe it or not. You have your stereo speakers there. You have your power awning right here, which is nice. This is gonna have scissor style stabilization jacks. You have a propane connection there for an outside stove or whatever you're gonna be cooking with. Low point drains right there. Coming around back, you have a nice square bumper on the back. You can throw your sewer hose in if you want. You have lighting right here. It's all LED lighting, which is super nice. And it is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. One thing I wanna point out real quick on the side, you see this J Smart system. Basically, the tow vehicle controls the front, rear, and side LED markers whenever you're turning. So, if you turn your like right turn signal on, all of your markers on the side are also going to flash along with your rear one, which is really cool. Just a safety feature. Coming around this way, it is a Schwintech slide system over here, outside of your water heater. Here's your city water connection, gray tank, black tank holding cable and satellite connection, 30 amp connection right here. This rides on a six inch I-beam frame. Standard sliding windows, which are good for something like this, get good cross ventilation, at least on the one window over here. These windows pop outwards and then the one on the other side slides. So yeah, you can get some good cross ventilation in here. This is where you fill your water tank up as well. Overall though, it's a pretty cool little unit. And again, you can tow this with a lot of different vehicles. Just keep in mind that oftentimes the biggest challenge with towing an RV isn't the weight. It's not even the hitch weight. It's how wind can affect towing it down the road and how that trailer being impacted by wind can affect your tow vehicle. So these are always things you want to keep in mind whenever you're towing an RV. Anyways, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Real quick, one thing I forgot, it's already pre-wired for the Furion surround cameras, which is also really nice. So yeah, it's a pretty cool little rig at a pretty decent price point. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.